hockey stick with these gloves. But I'm gonna do it for you. When I was a teenager, I had a mentor tell me that he didn't like the idea of stopping listening to new music. He said that the second he did that, he was old and irrelevant and out of the conversation. He said that whether it's music or anything, it's exciting to him just that there's more to learn. And I never forgot that and I started thinking about it at that young age. Since I lived with my parents, they were, you know, an obvious study. What was, it, what was in our stereo system? Well, my dad had eight tracks of Olivia Newton-John and Foreigner, but you know, this was the 90s. To my mom's credit, she did buy We Are The World when it came out on vinyl. But most of what we had in our collection when I was a kid, hits of the 70s, great love songs of the 60s. It was because that's what my parents grew up with and to them, that was like their bread and butter. That was their jam. I don't know if you've seen Adam Neely's video about the music that remains most dear to us and how it's usually what we were listening to around the ages of 14 or 15. For me, that's pretty true. And I think it has to do with the fact that you're forming all these friendships right around that time. You're, you're starting to notice the opposite sex walk up to this hill because I like it. You're going to dances. At least for me, that was kind of it. And so the songs that were played at the dances, the songs that I listened to in the car with my friends and that we, you know, taped from the radio, those are the songs that are dear to my heart. I've got more that are dear to my heart, but those do have some kind of a special connection simply because I was a teenager. <laughs> parents were listening to. Every time I go over to my grandpa's house, he would uh, have Hank Snow and Ernest Tubbs on the turntable. My grandma, to her credit, bought Anne Murray in the 80s. She, she thought that Anne Murray sounded enough like her favorite artists, who were uh, Tammy Wynette and Patsy Cline. So she bought, all, you know, the Anne Murray greatest hits, and that's actually how I, the big way, how I learned to sing harmony, was singing along to those songs with my grandma in her car. My mom, same thing. She, you know, she liked Hall and Oates coming out of the 70s. So I remember they put out a new record in the 90s, and she bought that CD, kind of because she had already known that band. And I do the same thing. You too my favorite band and when they put out a new album these days I'm all over it so I'm kind of like that too I figured out what I like what sounds good to me and that's some of the new music that I buy at the same time I was listening to you 2 I was also listening to Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots Soundgarden, oh my gosh. Early 90s were a good time for music. Late 90s, not so much. Along with all that rock and roll came the R&B from the 90s, which is also pretty dear to me. The Boys to Men, Babyface, Mariah Carey, all good stuff. But back to my friend's advice. What good's it gonna do me? What good? Well, sometimes it'll do me some good. It'll give me that feeling I'm looking for because you turn on heart-shaped box and you get a feeling you can't describe. Sometimes you need that feeling and you know where to go to get it. You go to your favorite old songs. But what about that advice I was given? Going a little fast. How do you keep current? Why do you keep current? How do you overcome your fear of keeping current?
Well, sometimes when I hear a new song, I want to share it with somebody. Usually I know who to share it to because I kind of know who digs the stuff that I dig. Sometimes I'll share it with somebody who says, yeah, I don't listen to new rap anymore. Or I, I quit listening to new music in the 70s or the 80s. The best music was written in the 70s. Or all my jams are in the 80s. I don't listen to anything beyond that. I can make sure that that's never me. I don't want that to be me. If it's you and it works for you, okay. I get it. But that's not gonna be me because as soon as you do that, you become irrelevant and you're not a part of the conversation anymore. Maybe you don't wanna be part of the conversation. I do. I don't like to be in a conversation and have people talking about music and me not know what they're talking about. Gosh, you're gonna miss out on some beauty in the world. Now, of course, you're allowed to not like things. You know, if you check something out and you hate it, hate it, hate the crap out of it. You know, you're allowed to hate things. But the minute that you start turning off to what's new, that's when you start to sound a little old. And it's really when you start to miss out on some of the most beautiful things that are out there right now. Two of my kids are really into hip hop music. They absolutely love like, you know, new rap and, uh, you know, from all these producers, Pharrell and DJ Khaled, Nicki Minaj. I try to keep it clean for them, you know, clean versions only kids. But if I want Charlie to be happy in the car when we're driving somewhere together, we gotta have his music on. And even if I get tired of it, I'm learning it and I'm learning things that I like about it. And it helps me to be in the conversation with Charlie, which is good. I mean, you might think Cardi B is the stupidest thing you've ever listened to, but when she says, well, I make Nick money moves, this sounds good. And, you know, maybe you think Drake is boring and he only uses four note melodies. I think I lie for you. I think I die for you. It's true that he only uses four note melodies, but my gosh, they're some of the most beautiful four note melodies in existence. And the production on music these days is where the time and money is spent. So whether or not that makes you mad, at least you notice it and you've got something to talk about. Now how do you find new music? One way that I do is I keep a text thread open with two of my brother-in-laws, Brad and Brian, and they like all kinds of different music and I like their taste. So one thing that we do is we send each other links all the time with just a running text thread. It's been going for years. Anything they tell me to check out, I check out and then we talk about it a little bit and I tell them to check something out and I find so much good new music that way. And some good old music too. Another way is that I do these live request shows and sometimes I take requests in real life as well. And if anybody ever requests something that I don't know or somebody that I've never heard of, I look them up and I try to learn it if I like it, you know, if I, if it speaks to me somehow, then I'll make it part of what I do and I'll learn to play these things. I also think it's a great challenge to uh, play my own arrangements of new songs. I love to do that. But he gonna play this game until he wins and kick it, push it, fight it, hit it till he knows that he can get it. thing is whenever I'm hanging out with musicians and they mention artists or friends of theirs who are making good music and I've never heard of them I just pull out my phone and I say how do you spell that and I, I have a list on my phone of people who my musician friends have told me to check out I find a lot of good music that way too you want to take the advice of people who you trust you're likely to get good suggestions when the suggestions do come. Another way is that you can Spotify stalk people. You can just look up your favorite musicians who are a little bit famous but not super famous, like my buddy Lyman Medeiros. He's a wonderful bass player in the LA area. You can just go look at his profile and you can see what he's been listening to lately. And you know, sometimes you catch him listening to something that's a little bit embarrassing, but then you always have to just give him the benefit of the doubt that he's got some pop gig he's gotta learn it for, right? 
but most of the time you can see what oh this is too far uphill for me I'm not gonna push and kick anymore you stalk the heck out of your friends and find out exactly what they've been listening to anything that looks interesting or unfamiliar to you just go look it up and listen that's a pretty cool thing about the internet pretty sure you can stalk me if you want to a lot of um, more famous kind of musicians don't keep their old Spotify profiles public mine's on there one thing to note is that my kids also listen to my Spotify account so sometimes you don't know if it was me listening to it or my kids listening to it so there are lots of ways to keep current I'm sure you've got some of your own tell me about it if you do I'd love to know how you hear new music oh another great way is anytime your musician friends or the people that you follow on your Instagram or whatever anytime they do a shout out or a collab a mention a hashtag of something you don't know what it is go look for it and then you know I just keep it in a list of new music anytime I've got time to kill that's what I'm listening to all right thank you for riding around with me today listening to me rant about not shutting your brain off to the new music I hope I gave you a few new ideas and that you had fun looking at the beautiful neighborhood I've been skating through. Not my neighborhood, by the way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.